I've, I've been always been a massive Blues fan and when I was playing, training alongside those boys, I think the last was always a guy that said, just give me options, stay on my inside or my outside. And he would just choose. So if he's not passing an inside ball, or no look pass, you do a banana kick back this way. So yeah. uh, that's that was my one job I had to do. What was the um, you know the plan when you first went over with Bayon? Probably just expecting to do that contract, and then I guess weigh up your options. Yeah, you know, it was something just refreshing because Bayon came up. And I came about three years before that, before coming back and knocking on the door. And just uh, by the time we came, okay, we would do this. Just something, uh, just something to refresh a new challenge. New, just take the family. Yeah. Uh, didn't have the best of first few months. Uh, and after that, didn't really enjoy that first year. I didn't. I thought, okay, I was gonna pull in the pin and. Let's, let's look somewhere else. And uh, but uh, we had a good talk with uh, my wife, and just said, "We'll guts it out, and just you know, really concentrate on this following season, and and just trained really hard, and came back and enjoyed it. Got into the culture, got into everything, and well, eight years down the track now. So we've uh, enjoyed it ever since. We never looked back, and we just took in the you know the the culture that. Uh, uh, Southern um, Southern France had to give in Bayonne, yeah. And uh, we know we loved the rugby there, and my family started uh, enjoying the time that we had. And I mean, I've heard that that first year in particular can be pretty tough for most people, um, especially you know if you're playing rugby and you're suddenly uh, doing these bloody thirty-six game seasons and stuff. Yeah, it was tough, mate. Because um, you know, it was coming on to end of two thousand eleven. I just I missed out on the World Cup. And obviously, I was at peace to move on. Yeah. And uh, then, uh, what? By the time I got to Bayonne, I think I wasn't mentally there. I thought I was. I thought, okay, I'll start fresh. But I guess uh, the body wasn't there. wasn't physically fit, and I thought things were just going to happen. I was in Bayonne. Uh, played some shocking games, mate. I wasn't <laughs> really good to my standard, and you know, I've got put to the bench and I wasn't struggling to play and things were just going backwards and I wasn't really enjoying it. Got to the stage when I get one game and uh, I got substituted off and and I had the crowd started booing <laughs> and I was like, where are they booing at? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was trying to do what? This was like seventh or eighth games down the track and I was like, right. And then I realized it was me getting booed. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was it was yeah, it was a real eye opener. We've always so proud. If you're part of that club, the All Black Club, you're so proud of being in the club. Your standard should be always up. Always pictures to be an All Black player to come and play for this club. So I yeah. had to uh, train like an All Black player and act like and get respect. And in the end, I got respect from players and coaches and. Uh, had my best year for for the club and things just grew from there. So uh, it was a good, even though it was I was 27 or 28 during that time, I kind of matured more. It felt like I kind of grew up. Yeah. <laughs> so the fact that you did, you know, another three years with them as well after that is, um, you know, you obviously turned it around pretty well. Yeah, it's, it's pretty hard, mate, because over here we, <laughs> I always try to. Um, some players that do come overseas, it's, it's trying to you try to advise them, just take everything in, and it's not going to be the same like home. Yeah. The first thing most players come here is, why do they do this? Oh, why is uh, why is these guys? You know, why do these guys always run this play? Or oh, I don't understand. You know, then they get the boys start to get frustrated and start telling. I don't know, tell, telling the boys, other players, other French players, how to play. Yeah. Or trying to advise the coach how to play, and they're real passionate people, <laughs> yeah, and very sometimes stubborn in some way. And uh, you might give an advice, and next thing you're not playing for four months, you know, <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> that's some of the stories we've heard here. Yeah. So, um, it's over here, you just gotta, you know, 
close the, up this thing and just head down, buckle down. You get the respect by just working hard. Just just harking back to that sort of beyond, you know, when you when you made that transition, uh, you know, into the midfield for a little bit. Um, well, I mean, when you were first told that you were going to be moving in there, were you uh, excited or, or a bit worried about it? I was more worried about the guys that played in the position because I yep. don't know, you know, I uh, felt quite stink because some of those guys are all passionate playing at centre. Yeah. And uh, when we started doing drills and I had to go into that position and the guys that normally play centre was really walking to <laughs> that position centre. <laughs> and then the coach would go, no, uh, you swap, you go to the other place, you go wing and Joe will go in. Yeah. And I was like awkward and you know, got to a point when they said, what? And I started questioning it. I yeah. confront of everybody like no what do you think said i place it i was like oh my gosh you know you don't it's totally different to at home home you just bite the lip okay you accept it then yeah. if you had an issue you go talk to your coach about it or oh, what did i be wrong but that was it's quite awkward for me because i didn't want to be in that place that uh you know trying to play another position this guy was so passionate about yeah and uh but then I was excited inside <laughs> like yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> uh because I hadn't played this since schoolball days, and um, that was a new challenge for me. And I was just because you played wing, um, you understand the starvation of getting the ball out wide, and, and that's why they call finishers because they were meant to finish these kind of last movements. And I remember being in the Blues the first few years, and this uh, loss's first uh, philosophy was just let our wingers get the ball, and yeah. that's that was loss's first thing. and uh, so in that case, we, we I think a few of the boys got a lot of ball and we, we enjoyed it, even though we'll do or die every week, uh, yeah. we'll enjoy our rugby. <laughs> well, it's, it's an easy, uh, easy tactic, right? When you've got guys like you, I mean, Rico Gear was there, Doug, Dougie Howlett, yeah. uh, Rupenny, Mills. Yeah, um, yeah we've uh, world class to all those players and we had a pretty good young Ford pack as well, which which obviously can't get in clean ball without those boys. So, um, uh, it was enjoyable to be a part of when during that time with loss, you know, being a young kid, you just, you loved the Blues. I loved the Blues. I was always a big Blues fan. Yeah. I went to a of the game because of Vindiri giving us tickets. And then when I was playing, training alongside those boys, I think loss was always a guy that said, he always just gives me options, stay on my inside or my outside, and he would just choose. So if he's not passing an inside ball or no look pass, you do a banana kick back this way. So yeah, uh, that's that was my one job I had to do. Yeah, how hard uh, was it? Um, uh, you know, trying to trying to figure out what what his plan was. Uh, I think he's on the go, and that's awesome. Um, it was so hard. You can see it coming. Yeah, and you can just hear the cuz cuz hey cuz. You know, he <laughs> just did this, he did the old look. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, something's coming and he he just tell you to be ready. Or, um, you know, you just create so many options for the boys, which was, you even though if you're on the old goal line or whatever, you know he's going to try something, you'll yeah. just, you just have to be aware because you don't have to call out, you just, the eye contact has always been the, the big thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so sometimes you go like this, <laughs> but uh, but his his belief and trust in his backline and his team is massive. He'll back anyone. And obviously, that first season with the Blues, uh, you got to sort of avenge that uh, previous loss that had to the Crusaders in the final. Yeah, yeah, I was a bit nervous too because it was that same because we were in, uh, me and my mates there in the South Stand. And um, just seeing that the game took down and it was such a, a tight game. It's been a long time ever since there, Matt, but <laughs> since the boys had a, a lift of that trophy. But uh, nah, still bleed blue, mate. Still support the boys. And despite them, uh, you know, we haven't, the boys haven't achieved that result. It's just been exciting to see those boys express themselves. And of course, helps, you know, that a guy like Bowden Barrett's coming into the setup for. Um, for the new yeah. you know, competition, oh. I just saw his uh, Bronco. I think he just passed <laughs> my he just passed my record of a 
past about two minutes or something, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, he's man, it's unbelievable how how fit uh, Bowden is coming into that. Uh, but uh, he's he'd be massive. He'd be massive for 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 the franchise. Just take so I mean, they can bring in uh, to that back line. Um, in a similar version to excitement that you bring with Lost, but a different, a unique way that he brings to the team is, is real special and um, he'd be massive. So it's hopefully you get that game going. Yeah. Uh, first game on this belt. Uh, but he looks, doesn't look too bad on blue, eh? Do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> he looks, it looks pretty settled in that blue jersey. But um, uh, yeah, big fan of him and he, he, should, he should go good. And you know those those first few seasons with with the Blues obviously coincided with your first couple of seasons with the All Blacks. That must have been a pretty um, pretty incredible, you know, to to basically not be playing professional rugby, and then suddenly, you know, within a few months, be be playing for the All Blacks at a World Cup. Just making the Blues itself was a huge, a huge, huge honour. I think uh, I think there was the Blues was quite about in December or something, November the year before. And uh, I came back from a broken uh, ankle uh, from World Cup 21s and I hadn't played for six months. So that's the reason why I missed start of playing uh, NPC was during that year because of my broken ankle. So I was doing rehab. Ted came downstairs in the gym. Uh, yeah. uh, he came down and uh, was doing mixed exercise after I was Graham and I was just a bit nervous and just doing my own stuff. And he said, are you good? And I said, oh yeah, good sir. And he said, uh, just, you know, he just sits, he just stands there and he just, you can see him thinking and he, you know, they'll, do you reckon you can play super rugby? <laughs> and I go, nah, yeah, maybe not two years, three years, uh, but nah, I don't think so, not yet. He goes, okay. Yeah, that's all he, that's the only thing he said and he walked out. Then uh, a few months later, I got a call from Fitzy, who was the manager. And he said, oh, congratulations, you've, you've made the blues. And I was like, wow, that's massive. So, and I didn't think too much about the ABs until I think we went and played the Highlanders. And I was in the car, we caught up with, I said, uh, Tulev and uh, Tanivula, uh, Elias Tanivula. And we were just sitting in the car and they said, well, what do you reckon? You should have a crack at the ABs. And, I didn't, that was in my head, and I go nah. And they were just saying, no, you, no, you got your two Fijian senior guys telling you you should have, you know, might even for a crack. And I was like, no, 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 it wasn't in my mind. That's all the time went in. And I guess when going in, when you finally get named into the ABs, uh, in the end, obviously, I was, I was over the moon and. I was on my way to, I was asking me to get some groceries for my mum. She told me during the announcement, but on the way to the shop, the, my rugby club was right near, so I parked in to just listen. Yeah. Uh, we must rugby club down there, and yeah, my name is Cork Court, and I was just stunned. Um, it's quite a good moment because I was at uh, my rugby club in the random car park by myself yeah. or the shop. <laughs> Came home and my mom was still worried about the groceries, totally forgot about it. So, uh, forget about that. And um, yeah, mom was over the moon. They're just emotional when your parents are crying there. And uh, I think it was two hours after that, um, all the rallies came. <laughs> some of them knocked off work and some knocked off work early. And, uh, you know, and that was the best memory of having all these people that supported you during that time coming home. And, I did not honestly know there was a World Cup during that year. Uh, that's how ready, well, I wasn't ready of playing professional rugby during that time. I didn't know there was a, a World Cup. And going to, I'm not too sure why, maybe the build up wasn't as, as strong as it was. And yeah. going to the Tri Nation, I, I still wasn't thinking about a World Cup. Wow. I was just in the buzz. And Month, next month goes, mum goes, are you nervous to be in the, the they're going to name the World Cup squad? And I just realised, man, there's a World Cup uh, this year. Then it hit me because I was too in my bubble of just so, so much in awe of being in that team. 20, 2003, like you said, you know, the, the World Cup didn't quite go the way that obviously the All Blacks are hoping for. You know, once we hit, for me, once we hit Sydney, it was like, oh, 
everything just came out one go. There's a World Cup semi and going into that game, I think media played a massive part of getting the Wallabies up. Well, yeah. You know, being the worst ever Wallaby team to be into the World Cup so forth. And, and uh, we had been in a good role and, uh, and uh, I think obviously that one pass that everyone talks about yeah. was like 50 points put on us. And that wasn't even like the last five or ten minutes of the game. It was too early in the game, but there was so much of a shock that I think they everyone got into that we kind of froze and no one actually took to each other. To th- more to what extent that the boys are now into that level now when you've got key, uh, key leaders that can talk and situations that happen in the game that guys can look to to come back to to be in the game so um, yeah I remember that one try the boys just went boom yeah uh, and then the momentum changed obviously the crowd loved it uh, just seeing Mordlock and his gloves running away <laughs> <laughs> um, but coming to that, it was it was it was a whole new experience. I've just been a massive year, yeah. And uh, it was quite a shame. Like the last the last two World Cups we've we've had, and the last World Cup I had here in '07, you know, it was I think it's the best place that I've been involved with in the team. You know, almost in in the respect that they were pretty much all close to their peak, yeah. And um, Totally different situation though, obviously, but uh, going into that World Cup uh, in 11, I was at the, right in front there watching the game and Eden Park, uh, the boys to finish it off. I was, yeah. was so, I was like, you know, me and my wife, and it's like a real touching moment because it kind of went through all those years of sacrifice of the boys and you knew what they had gone through and you yeah. thought about the past players that have been involved in the previous World Cups have been watching that game and just that your shoulders, player shoulders are worse, but uh, for former players and you know the, what they go through, you understand what they go through and their build up to finally get it was, it was massive just sitting there and watching them. Uh, the boys finish it off in Eden Park was uh, the most satisfying thing. It's almost like you're all involved. I mean, that must have been tough for you, though, you know, initially missing out in 2011 um, and then having to effectively watch from the sidelines. Yeah, uh, I guess I guess it's tough some ways. I knew going into the year, for some reason or not, I had, I had, I had a feeling that it was going to be my last year. Missing on the World Cup squad it wasn't as strong as, at a, as my first time or the second time I missed out. Yeah, maybe because I had felt at peace. Okay, it, it is my time. I had peace that whatever um, you know, we as a player going into that, we we know where, if there's someone that can do a better job and take your place and and carry that forward, you can do so much in in your time in that jersey. And then if it's your time, it's your time. And I came at peace at that. I think the call came, you know, when you get those phone calls from the coaches, <laughs> you know, that's, that's never a good thing. Yeah. Um, I think I got a call and I saw Ted's name come up and uh, I said, oh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I answered the call and uh, obviously Ted's voice was more uh, in a sad state than what my voice was replying back. I was, he just said, and uh, I was just, just to let you know, um, it's sad to say that you won't be involved uh, in this in the squad. And you see his voice, uh, and you know, you can tell you can break down a bit because I guess you can understand at this state of, you know, where players get close to these, you know, coaches and the team is such a tight unit, the AUBs. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was, it was quite, <laughs> just for him, just hearing him was quite sad, but... For me, I, I just told him, I, I just I just thanked him. I thanked him for the opportunity for these past few years and and just to tell the boys that I wish them all the best and we'll be backing them. Um, and I felt so much peace in saying it. You know, when you first burst onto the scene in 2003, everyone loved you. And then that kind of turned a little bit, you know, as you got a bit older and, and obviously, you, you know, you had form dips and things like that. 
that must have been incredibly tough for a, still a pretty young guy to have to deal with suddenly that change. I guess you just made you realise how important family is and the support they give you during all that time. I think the biggest thing uh, for me was the 09. 09 during the week we, we played the, the box yeah. in Durban and uh, we lost the game. I think during that week I was going pretty well. I trained uh, pretty well. But at the same time, my, my wife and my son Cyprus was in Fiji during that time. And so there was, he was only a few months, maybe five months, four months. And um, we had, he had gone into some uh, illness that it was real bad in Fiji. And obviously the f- condition in the U.S. it wasn't that great. So, and uh, I still remember just thinking about it, being a young father, being so far away. Yeah. My responsibilities I should have been in, in the hospital with my, my wife went on, in Fiji for a holiday with my son. And, you know, young father, you don't know what to do. You're broken. And so I just remember going in the shower one of those, the Friday before one of the runs, and I just mostly cried in the shower, just thinking about it, just gutted, couldn't be there. Yeah. My balls would come and my, my eyes were just everywhere. I just wouldn't concentrate on the ball. I dropped so many balls, fighting game, had a review, and I got killed. Uh, I got shot <laughs> and that and their video review uh, just my videos getting why is this why you do that and they showed a time when they kicked back and we turned around to chase and tried to gather the ball and the body language I had was just just like slow motion like just drained and I didn't see that when I was looking at it in front of all the boys I was so embarrassed and 010 I just concentrated on having fun don't worry about anything my ABs, ambition to make the ABs wasn't there. And I made the ABs in the end. Yeah. And through that, going on to the end of the year, I was just so drained uh, from all that emotion. And the timing of the Bayon contract was perfect. Life's been a real roller coaster here because even my last year in Bayon, when we got relegated, uh, we, when we got relegated from uh, Bayon, it was an option for me to stay or yeah. I can, for another club. Um, obviously, your contract gets you a reduction of things, and because of dropping down. And so I told my wife, "What do you want to do? Do you want to? You want to? We were quite happy in Bayonne, or should we look for us?" So we had a few clubs in France knocking on the door, and some club were wanting to achieve something different. And racing just came back, and you no know, mucking around. You do mucking around straight three years. We'll cover you. Look after you. Um, this is who we, what we think of you, and this is what uh, our ambitions are. Such a, a great, like we say, it always been God's plan to be what it was for that one month, because that following year, I was like, my first Championship Cup, I was like, man, this Championship Cup, I always play, I wanted to play this, you know? Yeah. And let, a few months ago, I said, oh, now that's me, and I enjoyed it. I loved it. It was a new challenge. The pace of the game was fast. It was like Super Rugby again, and made the finals, championship cup, and I was yeah. like, you know, I was struggling playing Bayonne's <laughs> relegation <laughs> every year last year, and now I'm playing a final of a championship cup, and we obviously missed out to Saris, and uh, made the final top 14, same year, played uh, Cap Nou in front of 94, 5,000 plus spectators yeah. in a soccer field in Spain and won the top 14 over there. So for me, that the few, few months of transition and pass uh, to playing in front of that crowd for moments before, a few moments, few months before that, thinking, oh, that's me, until yeah. playing in front of 90 something thousand and winning. Uh, massive, massive uh, hard up. And of course, you know, you call time on the um, on the career on the playing career anyway. Um, but at the end of last year, wasn't it? Yeah, coming up to one year now, anniversary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was uh, sometime late May or June, and it was funny you said it because there was that another moment when it was against Argentina, and there was still a few games left. 
but again, I had that same random feeling because yeah. <laughs> I um, I hadn't run for 15 minutes. I had no ball. I was so static, and I hadn't sprinted. And there was a chance to kick it in the goal line, and a halfback came and done a grubber kick, and uh, I knew my hammies weren't right. Yeah, you know that feeling, and then I shouldn't sprint, and I went like this too. But he's like this, <laughs> <laughs> so he kicked, and the ball was right in front of me. I could have pressed it, I, and I didn't, and I just stopped. I done my hammy. Okay. Uh, there was like three games before the semis, uh, top fourteen, and um, oh, it's three games before the quarters. Sorry, and uh, I done my hammy, and inside I just knew that's my last game. Yeah. I've been enjoying it. This transition is, and the club's been real well, uh, good for me. And this family time's been awesome. Yeah. I've gone into the, you know, helping out with the the sevens here and uh, the academy side of things, development, which is I've I've enjoyed seeing the satisfaction of seeing players grow, young players grow, and see their eyes understand things they never understand before. And, and it sounds like then that the plan is hopefully when you do come back to, to stay involved in coaching at some level. Uh, and some of my future goals is some way to help out in Fiji rugby. Yeah. And some way, um, of knowing what we've learned here and overseas and taking it back home. Because before them t- stepping foot overseas, they've really had a taste of what to expect. So the knowledge uh, and understanding and teachings that I've, I've picked up from here and some of these players I've really done in Fiji rugby. Uh, at the moment and I just want to be part of that as well and then you know, a Fiji and World Cup coming up during this next, the next World Cup in France would be awesome to be around during that time as well thank you so much for your time and I'm you know I'm sorry for taking up so much of it but uh no all good bro anytime <laughs>